Hey guys, so I'll be going another truffle box tutorial. This tutorial goes over um, the Solidity backends with a Next.js frontends. And for those of you who don't know about Next.js, um, honestly, I didn't know much about it either, but it seems to um, work with React a lot, so there's a lot of similarities to React. And the value it gives that it provides server side rendering and generates tag websites. Um, so it's also production ready. So a lot of, some companies apparently find this pretty useful, um, widely used by large companies. Um, but I'll let you do the research yourself. I'll put this link in the description. Also, link for Cells, which is the company of Next um, website here, so you can also take a look. Um, and by the way, like I'm mainly just doing these videos based on popularity of the truffle boxes. Like these truffle boxes have stars next to them, and this particular one has 110, and um, out of all the Tuffle boxes out there, that's pretty high. A lot of them barely get over 100, like some of them are lucky to reach like past like 40 or whatever. Um, like the pet shop one I did recently is about 100. That's how I'm choosing these tutorials. Um, so even if I can't tell you exactly why Next.js is important, apparently some people seem to think it's important. Okay, either way. So this particular tutorial, like I mentioned before how these are apparently updated recently. So this is 10 days ago from the time I'm recording this video, but this was created about like two, like three years, uh, two something years ago at least. So um, I don't think some of the codes actually changed as much as we would have liked. So I made some edits to the code to make this work this time when normally I don't have to. So I'll just go over that. And I put the steps, um, I'll be following some of these steps, but I put the steps I did in the description so you don't have to like, you can just read the description afterwards. You don't have to take super detailed notes. Um, so as usual, I already have Truffle installed, so I'm not gonna install it. Um, I read this unbox command and that's where I get some errors. Um, and I, sometimes you get errors and you can kind of like, the tutorial kind of works anyway. Um, I'm getting these node pre tutorials. So I had to figure a way around it. So what I ended up doing was um, I realized that a lot of my node modules are kind of old. Um, so what I did was I updated all the node modules. And the particular way I did it, I'm on a Mac, um, is to delete the node modules and package lock.json files. So I'll just do that. Um, go to clients, your node modules over here. I'm using Visual Studio Code. So I'll just delete that and package log that Jason's right here, so I'll delete that. Um, and so there, there's like this other, there's, there are other ways to do this, um, but I just go into client folder because that's where all my front end code is. Um, and I'm gonna use something called npm check updates. Um, I think there's a, another way on Mac that you can do this, like npm install npm or npm upgrade npm or something like that, but I was getting some permission issues and I didn't want to use sudo, so this kind of worked without using sudo, so I'm going to use that instead. Um, so this will check to see like what updates you can do, and ideally, like generally what you want to know is that you're, if you're working on a very old project, you want like know to somewhat automatically um, just update all the dependencies for you to like update versions. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. And then over here you'll see that like I can upgrade like this next to from version six to ten, React from sixteen seventeen, React DOM sixteen seventeen, and this web three beta to natural non beta version. And then it says if you want to install, just do npm install. So I'll just do npm install. Um, and then this will update my node modules to be up the latest things and like stuff will actually work now. Okay, so, and by the way, I'm not like a front-end developer, so I don't really know NPM that well either, but this seems, this seems to have worked. Um, I might get some comments that there are better ways to do it. Okay, uh, while that's happening, I'm gonna just tell you about a couple other things. So Truffle comes with a default compiler version, and I guess that my default compiler is five, even though the latest Solidity compiler is like eight or something right now. Um, so either way, for our contracts, we have to update the versions or else you get a compiler error. Um, so I updated, like, literally in the error message, it would tell me. Um, I guess I could just show you, like, so I would do a truffle compile, well, truffle develop, and this will bring up a development environment with a Gantt, um Ethereum network. 
Um, so that's the next step, by the way. And then when I did compile, um, it would run into an error. So I'll just let it error out and show you the error message. Um, so we're going to just change the compiler version from about 4 something to 5 something. Um, so yeah, comp compilation fails. Um, I'm using um, compiler 0.5.16 and it wants that. So I'm just going to change exactly. I could probably get away with slightly differing numbers, but I'm just going to um, use these. So I have these solidity files and I also have one test file, which um, if I just do a compile, it won't error out if I don't change this one. But if I do a test, if I run the test, this will also error out. So I'll just change these three. Um, so yeah, that's in the next step I'm going to post. Um, so a compile should work now. Um, and then something else that you want to change, it's going to happen later on, is later on we're going to run to um, this path file. So when I did the compilation, um, it created these JSON versions of my contracts in this build contracts folder. Um, and we referenced this in our JavaScript um, app. So here you see uh, it's trying to reference this, this contracts not simple source.json. So it's trying to reference this file. Um, that's not the right path. Um, so there's also this probably a better way to do this. But just to get to work, I just kind of figured out a path that would work. So I would change this contracts.json to um, this. It's pretty much two folders up. So I'm currently in the lib folder here. One folder up is the client, and one folder up is like this entire folder that holds all these folders. So that so now we can go to the build since we're in that highest folder, and then we go to contracts, and then we get simple storage.json. Um, so I'm just doing that now. I uh, had a typo there so that um, we don't run into issues later. Okay, so that's all the change I did. And now I'm going to migrate, and migrate is going to migrate our compiled contracts into our test Ethereum network, and the test Ethereum network was um, started up by doing Truffle Develop. Okay, so it finished. We deployed both contracts. Um, it cost this much. Um, yeah, the migration steps are put in these two files, these in the migrations folder. Um, then we're going to run our front end. So it doesn't want this to do in Truffle Develop. We have to do it in normal, like, Terminal place, um, current directory clients, go to your front end code, do an npm run dev, and it'll run our front end on localhost 3000. Okay. Uh, I think that may have, that may be done, but just let that load. Um, it's being kind of slow. Okay. So I'm going to go to our front end code. Um, the tutorial also mentioned um, being able to test. Um, it does work. Um, I can do that after this is done loading. OK, so this is our home page for our front end, so it worked. Um, this message is fine. Um, that is, my code is in. Was it index or was it this in lib? That's a recontainer. Uh, get web three. Yeah, it was just that's where that error message comes from. But it will just create a new one, so it's fine. Um, okay, so I'll just take a look. Go to my accounts, and then you'll see it's loading over here. Um, and it'll print out the list of our account names, our account numbers. Account numbers are, um, when I hit trouble develop, it spun up these 10 accounts. So it'll be like a couple of those accounts. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, all 10 of these. And it should match, um, yeah, 0271 and 0271. Um, and then so my guess is um, that this web container, well, Web3, this library thing is just instantially Web3 because you need Web3 to 
um, communicate with the Ethereum network, um, get contracts. It's kind of loading in the contracts. Web3 container is like it's setting a certain state. So we're specifically setting Web3, our accounts, um, and our contract. So these are the 10 accounts. This is the simple storage contract and this is Web3. Um, our index page is just referencing our next two links. So I, I took down the My Accounts URL. And then, so this My Accounts is just printing out our accounts um, variable that we instantiated in our Web3 container library. And then like the last thing is that we have our dApp code. Um, so, whoops, I pressed calendar. So I'm gonna go my dApp. Um, it's a lot slower since I'm recording this. Okay, so I noticed that when I did get account balance. Oh, actually it's working now. Okay, so right now this is just a account balance. Our account balance is that value in our, um, we just store a value in a simple storage, um, just a stored data variable and it's initially set to zero. So it's just set to zero. If I do that, it'll set it to five. And then that'll also decrease the amount of ether we have. So I'm gonna set this to store five again, which is going to keep this as five, but it's gonna decrease our ether. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. And that's because like we're, we're doing things on the blockchain and it's costing gas. So even though it's not really, really doing anything, it's still like cost money to do it. Um, so that's that. Um, that's pretty much the entire tutorial. Um, there's some stuff on MetaMask and test RPC I'm not going to go over. If you want me to run the test, um, I can run the test. Um, but this will pretty much run the files in this simple storage um, test files. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that helps. I'll just let this finish up. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Yeah, it's compiling our test file right now. Um, and it's doing the test, and you'll see some successful messages after soon. Uh, any moment now. Yeah, so it said it took 173 milliseconds. That seems to take longer to me, but uh, it was also overhead from all the recording software. Um, so it should work faster for you. Um, okay, it passed. All right, so this video is probably pretty long. I'll let you guys go at it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.